on your mind. That's a yes, good thing. Yes, Lord. And since you got heaven on your mind, I'm going to tell you a few things today that will help you get there. Yeah. Amen. So we do thank God. We certainly give honor to the shepherd of this household of faith. Yes. Y'all must see Harris. Amen. To the first man of the house, Reverend Abilene Harris, my brother in Christ. So to give honor to my lovely wife, Minister Connie Jackson. Amen. Amen. My bone, flesh of my flesh. Amen. And to Deacon Kearney, the deacon of this house, Amen. and Deacon Claude and Billy Branch in their absence. Amen. We certainly give honor to all the saints of God, our faithful gatekeepers who are on their post this morning. Uh, we thank God for every disciple that's here. And we do thank God for our audio visual man in the back. Yes. Yes. We thank God for everything that he's doing in this season. Amen. At this time, uh, if you were turning your Bibles, we will be reading from the book of Revelation. We'll be reading from chapter 1, which was in your hearing, verses 1 through 3. Uh, when the people of God have it, they will say amen. 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 And the word of God reads, The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servant things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all the things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. I'm going to use that last verse, verse 3, for my text. Blessed is he that readeth, and that hear the words of the prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. And for a subject or a thought, I would like to leave with you some, some good things to know. Amen. Lord, we thank you right now for your word, which is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. Lord, have your way. Move me out of the way. Sit yeah. me down. Holy Spirit, stand up and have your way and, and speak to your people as you speak to me. I want nothing of myself to be said, but all that you have given me to speak through these mouths of clay. And Lord, we thank you right now. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Some good things to know. Some good things to know. We know as we go through this life, this world, you may be seated in the presence of God. We know that uh, sometimes people are talking about some of everything. Uh, even in churches, preachers are talking about some of everything. Uh, some of them are telling people things that they need to know. Then some of them just telling them things that they want to tell them. But what I came to tell you today, there are some things that all of us need to know. There are some good things that we all need to know. And one of the good things we need to know was what you just heard from the reading of Revelation. We know that it's a good thing to know what the end is going to be. Uh, in the world we are living in, there are lots of things going on that a lot of folks are trying to figure it out. They're scratching their head trying to figure out what is exactly is going on. Uh, the reason they don't know what's going on because they have not sought it out in the word of God. Uh, they're trying to figure it out using their own thoughts and their own level of understanding. They try to figure out what's going on and what the next move is going to be. But one thing we know. One thing is good for us to know, the word of God has already talked to us about what is going to happen in these days that we're living in. Uh -huh. uh, so it's a good thing that we know these things. And uh, once we know them, we ought to be able to share them with someone else. So when someone approaches us and try to figure out what's going on, we need to be able to tell them what's going on. Yeah. Uh, some have no clue why things are happening the way they are. And they know that what happens because of that, because of their lack of knowledge, some are fearful at this time. They don't know what's going to happen next, so they have fear. And they are concerned about what's they're concerned about what the president is going to do next. Uh, one thing about it, though, the president won't do anything that God doesn't allow. Ain't that good to know? Yeah, man. Now, I told you, I'm going to tell you all some good things to know today. Uh, however, what we need to understand, God does not want his people to be ignorant. Uh, and though, uh, you know, a lot of preachers may not talk about what I'm going to be talking about today because a lot of people don't want to talk about the book of Revelation. Yeah. But uh, it, it, there are some good things yeah. in that to know. Yeah. So we're going to talk about those things today, those good things to know. Uh, even in the text, we find that Jesus has revealed some things to John. And uh, these are things that must shortly come to pass. Uh, don't you think that's something good to know? Yeah. Uh, things that's going to shortly come to pass. Notice I said shortly yeah. come to pass. 
And that's good to know. Yeah. Uh, verse 3 tells us uh, a lot of good things to know. Uh, verse 3 of that text tells us that uh, these things uh, will happen and they will come to pass. But it also said, uh, not what we used to hear. Uh, we used to hear, you don't want to read that book. That's right. But what I read in my Bible, it says, bless uh -huh. is he that readeth this book. Amen. Now, isn't that good to know? Yeah. Uh, that means you can tell somebody else. That if you heard that it's not a good thing to re read Revelation, I want to call your attention to Revelation 1 and 3. Amen. Well, you know, you can't talk to people unless you're using the word of God. And then you tell them that word in verse chapter 1, verse 3 said, you are blessed if you read it. Uh -huh. Now, that means you ought to be happy when you read it. You ought to have some joy when you read it. Now, there are some things that are good to know, but all of them might not be joyful, but there are still things that are good to know. And uh, as I, we go through each one of these, we know we can find ourselves in these because verse 3 says, blesses he that read them uh -huh. and hear uh, the words of this prophecy. But one thing about it is you got to keep those things too. You got to keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. So what that tells us is we can't go around changing what it says in Revelation. Yeah. We got to keep it just like it is. Amen. And as I said, blessed means happy. So this is not a book to be feared. Uh, you know, some have been led to believe that, but this is not a book to be feared. Right. This is a book that's good to know. Uh, this book reveals 21 judgments in it. Now, uh, when people hear about those 21 judgments, they'll say to me, well, I don't know, preacher, that don't sound like that's too good to know. But I tell you, it is good to know. Yeah, because when you know what's coming, that's right. you prepare yourself for the end. Amen. So these 21 judgments, they are coming. Whether people like them or not, they're still coming. Yeah. Whether people want to hear about them or not, they're still coming. Yes. So those 21 judgments are happening. They're going to come upon the world at the end times. And they're not pleasant, as I said. But what is good to know is that if you're a believer, you don't have to worry about them anyway. Amen. So ain't that good to know? If you are a believer, you don't have to even worry about those 21 judgments that's going to come upon the world because they aren't going to come upon you. Because the Lord said he's going to take us away from those things. All right. now, now, where do you get that from, preacher? I get that from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, uh -huh. verse 16 through 18. Uh, that scripture reveals to us some things that are good to know. Uh -huh. Uh, yeah, the reason I'm so joyful this morning, I know everybody say, now Mama Duke just passed, you ought to be sad about that thing. But I know who Mama Duke is. Yeah. So I'm not sad about that thing because uh, right here, and, and when this word was prepared, I didn't even know, you know, I didn't know she was going to be gone today. But look what verse 16 said. It says the dead in Christ shall rise first. Yeah. Yeah. See, see, that's good to know. See, I ain't got to be worried about Mama Duke. The dead, she going to ride before I ride. I said, dead in Christ shall rise first. Ain't that good to know? If you lost a loved one and they died in Christ, you ain't got to worry about them because they're going to be the first one to ride in those last days. Then us, whoever else in verse 17 says, whoever is alive at the time shall be caught up with them in the clouds yes. to meet the Lord in the air and will ever be with the Lord. Amen. So she'll get there before I get there yeah. if I'm still here. Amen. Ain't that good to know? Yeah. See, we talking about the rapture. Now, you know, I, I have talked to some people, you know, there's a lot of controversy about the rapture. You know, some don't believe it. Uh, even one of my brothers, we you know we went back and forth over the Thanksgiving holiday about the rapture. Now he believes in the Word of God, but he just don't see how it's possible that the rapture can occur. But let me tell you this: I'm gonna tell you the same thing I told him. Whether you believe it's gonna occur or not, it's not gonna change the fact that it's gonna occur. It's not gonna change the fact that the dead in Christ are gonna rise first. And then us that remain will be caught up to meet them, meet them in the air yeah. and forever be with the Lord. Tell your neighbor, that's good to know. That's, that's good to know. Good to know. And then verse 18 reveals that this another good thing to know. Because Paul says what we ought to do is comfort one another with these words. Amen. So you ought to be telling people, I'm going to tell you something that's good to know. Uh, before the end happens and before all these judgments come upon the world, if you're a believer... You and I are going to be here because you're going to be caught up in the air Amen. to meet the Lord. Amen. And then that, when you finish telling that, say, that ain't that good to Amen. know. So you, you, you just made their day when you told them that. 
But the only way you're going to make their day is if they believe it. And if you want to tell them, you better make sure you believe it. Because this, 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 this good news is for believers only. It's just like being in a membership. If you're not a member, it don't apply to you. But when you are a believer and you believe these things, then you can have some joy. And then you can comfort one another. Now, you can't tell nobody about this good news with a frown on your face. See, when you tell them, you ought to have a joyful expression on your face. Say, I'm going to tell you something good to know. We ain't going to be here with all that stuff happening. And if that was not good enough, there's another uh, good thing that you need to know. Uh-huh. It's written in Revelation chapter 20, verse 6. And it's talking about the millennial reign of God. And the word of God reads, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. Uh-huh. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. How about, ain't, that, ain't that good to know? Tell you that, that's good to know. We're going to reign with him a thousand years. See, because what's going to happen is when he comes back to set up his kingdom, he's going to set it up and, and he's going to reign and rule for a thousand years and we're going to reign with him. And not only that, we're going to be priests. We're going to be priests at that time. And, and see, it says we will have no part of the second death. Thank you, uh, uh, thank you, Lord. Uh, the second death, that's when the be- unbeliever, when they die one time on earth and they think that it's over. But how many of you know it ain't over? Yeah. That's just the beginning. Because when you close your eyes here, you're going to open up your eyes somewhere. Amen. You're going to either open up your eyes in heaven uh-huh. or you're going to open up your eyes in hell. Right. You better believe you're going to open up your eyes. On- so those ones who didn't believe, they're not going to be opening their eyes. They're not, they have no part of the second resurrection. Uh-huh. The second death is what they're going to experience. Yeah. But aren't it good to know that we're not going to have to experience the second death? If we follow the commandments of the Lord, keep his commandments, and, and love our neighbors like he told us to, and love him like we're supposed to, we ain't going to have no part of the second death. Amen. We're going to die once, but we're going to die to live again. Amen. See, we're living now, but we're going to live again. Yeah. Uh, this occurs when Christ comes to set up his kingdom. He is coming back. Y'all do know that, right? Uh, ain't that good to know he's coming back uh, he told the disciples he said I'll go to prepare a place for you and then when I come back I'm going to receive you unto myself now you know that's good to know uh, the disciples thought it was good to know too uh, they might not have believed it right then but they know now uh, sooner or later they got it and they went forth and did what the Lord told them to do because they said I'm going to do all this you can persecute me you can beat me down you can do all you want to but one day he coming back for me. Yeah. He's coming back for me. He made me a promise. He, co- he said, look up for your redemption draw nigh. If you're not looking up for him to return, then you're going to be caught by surprise and you're not going to be ready, but you need to know that he is coming back. Yeah. Amen. And you better live every day like it's today when he's going to come back. Because uh, you may not have tomorrow. Tomorrow may be too late. That's good to know. Um, you know, that may not be good to know to some people who want to live these old raggedy, crooked lives. But for us who are saved, sanctified, and filled with the precious Holy Ghost, that is good to know. Amen. That he is coming back. Uh, this, and one thing about it is, uh, here's another thing that's good to know. Uh, in Revelation chapter 20, verse 11, John says these words. And I saw a great white throne Uh and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. I see now somebody reading that would say, well, that don't sound like no good news right there, AP. But let me tell you, that is still good to know. It it may not be the best news, but it is still good to know. Uh, The only way that this will affect you if you don't keep the commandments of the Lord. If you're not trying to live holy like the Lord commanded you to, then you do need to be concerned about this verse. But one thing about it is still good to know. You know, the Lord didn't wait until judgment day to say, did you know that there was a great white throne and you didn't really have to appear before it? Did you know that? No, he's letting you know that now. So if you appear before the white throne, that's your choice yeah. because that is prepared for those ones who are unbelievers. And one thing about it is this is a place where whosoever was not found written in a book of life and they're going to have to give an account. Yeah. And, and ain't no need I'm trying to plead their case because their case has already been solved. Yeah. 
And you know what they're going to dwell? They're going to be cast into the lake of fire. And that's what it says in verse 15. They will be cast into the lake of fire. So you say, well, that don't sound good. Why God? He going to cast them in the But he lets us know today yeah. that there is a great yeah. white throne. Yeah. And, and one thing about that throne, you don't want to appear before the great white throne. But you know, if you appear before, it's because you made the decision to live the life that you Amen. live. Because now you have to give an account for your life. And like I said, you can hire the best lawyer in the world. He's not going to be able to plead your case because it's already sealed. Yeah, there is a great white throne. And it's for those who choose not to follow Jesus and his commandments. But here's something else that's good to know. However, that's not for us because we're not going to be judged there. So Paul reveals to us in Romans chapter 14 and 10 uh -huh. uh, when he's speaking to the church at Rome on uh, where they're going to be judged at. Yeah. Uh, this is for the believers. Right. It says, but why dost thou judge thy brother? Let's get that out first. Because he was asking, why are you judging your brother? First of all, um, there is a judge that's going to judge the whole world, but it's not you. You have not been chosen to judge your brother. And then he goes on to say, why does thou say that not thy brother? Because some of us think we're doing the right thing when we try to judge one another and tell everybody what their faults are and what their shortcomings is. But Paul asked the church at Rome, why are you doing that? Who are you to be judging anybody? And who are you? Because when you do it, you're setting your brothers at naught. Then he goes on to say, for we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. All. Oh, man. That means if you're a believer, you're going to stand before the judgment of Christ. Judgment seat of Christ. It doesn't make any difference out if you made a mistake somewhere. As long as you repented and the Lord forgave you, you're still going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And one thing about it is when you stand before the judgment seat of Christ, here's something good to know. If you find yourself in front of that seat, you know you already made it. Yeah, you already made it. You, some of us might go in there smelling like smoke, but we made it. Tell your neighbor, that's good. That's a good thing. We made it in. Our, our little gal may be shorter than somebody else's, but we did make it. And that's good to know. So now the only thing we got to do is just wait for the rewards to come. Because we already made it in. So now we're waiting to get some crowns. See, those crowns, isn't it good to know that you can get some crowns when you get up there? Amen. But let me tell you something. You earn those crowns now. now. What you're doing every day in your life. If you're telling somebody about Jesus, you're going to get a crown. Amen. If you're preaching the gospel the way it's supposed to be preached, you're going to get a crown. If you're loving your neighbor like you, you're going to get some crowns. So these are the only thing that you're going to be with. You say, Lord, I'm so glad I made it in, but Lord, is it, did, I, did I earn any crowns? Yeah. And if you didn't earn no crown, the only thing I can say for you, shame on you. Shame on you. Because the Bible says you will be ashamed. Because you have an opportunity right now. I'm so thankful for these little young ladies who have said, I want to do something for the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. They trying to earn some crowns. Even at this little young age, they try trying to earn some crown. All of us, there's a lot of work to be done. Yes. They say the, the harvest plentiful, yeah, but the labels are few. So there's a lot of work to be done. So what we need to be doing now, so when we appear before the judgment seat of Christ, also known as the Bema seat, when we stand before that seat, we, we want to be able to say, Lord, we did something. Amen. We should get some kind of crown. And then when you get the crown, uh, don't be trying to flaunt it, putting it on your head, walking around heaven all day. I'm out, look at me, look at me, what I did. Yeah, it ain't for you. It's for you to cast back at the feet of the ones who gave it to you. Because you're so thankful that you made it in. <laughs> Nothing else really matters. But whenever you say, you do thank the Lord that he did see something in you to give you those crowns. But I got to give it back to the person that gave it to me. So that you got to cast them at his feet. Here's another good thing to know. In Revelation chapter 21, verse 1 through 4. It speaks of a new heaven and a new earth. Yeah. Uh, and and that's, they say there's going to be no more sea. And there's going to be a holy city there that God sends down out of heaven called New Jerusalem. You know one thing that really gave me some joy? When I heard the president say this, he said that we're going to set up the uh, embassy for uh, uh, Israel in the city of Jerusalem. <laughs> 
Now, see, that right there made me feel good. That, that tell me right there, the president may not, you know, some of the things he's doing, he's being led by the Lord. Because uh -huh. that holy city. Yeah. But we're talking about the new Jerusalem. And here's something good to know. When that happens, God will, verse 4 of Revelation chapter 21 says, God will wipe away all tears from their eyes. Amen. He said there will be no more death, no more sorrow, nor crying, nor pain. Ain't that good to know? Amen. No, in that day, you ain't got to worry about no more pain. Uh, Mama Duke was going through pain in her body, but she ain't got to worry about no more pain now. She ain't got to worry about no more suffering now. She ain't even got to worry about those last few days when she couldn't get her breath. But the Lord is giving her new breath now. He giving, you know, she already got a new body in the house. So she's doing good. We still down here trying to struggle with these things. We got called bodies, but she's all right. Everything done been made new. She ain't suffering through nothing. Tell your neighbor that's good to know. That's if you got loved ones that's going on, it's good to know. Yeah. They taking care Amen. of. No more tears. No more pain. No more sorrow. It's good to know also that there's a tree of life there. Yes, Lord. See, there's a tree of life. You know, we had access to the tree of life in the beginning. But because of old hard-headed Adam and his hard-headed wife, Eve, we were cast out of that garden and we didn't have access to the tree of life anymore. But do you know a day is coming when we're going to have access to the tree of life again? Amen. Revelation chapter 22 and 2 says this. It speaks of a river like flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. And it says in the midst of the street of it, on either side of the river is a tree of life, uh -huh. which bear twelve manner of fruit. And yielded her fruit every month. Yes, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Ain't it good to know the pharmacy gonna be out of business? You ain't gonna be going to the drugstore no more. If you like going to the drugstore, you're gonna miss it in those days. Because the only thing you gotta do is walk up to that tree, pull your little leaf off, and put it in your mouth, and you're gonna be healed of everything that could come upon you. Don't y'all know that's how it started in the beginning yeah, anyway? Lord. See, they used to use herbs and stuff that's like that to be cured. Yeah. You know, they had certain tea leaves they used for this and, and certain herbs they used for that. But then all of a sudden, uh, some witchcraft got involved. Y'all right. uh, don't know what that's I'm talking right. about. Okay, yeah. if you don't know what I mean, pharmacia or pharmacy is witchcraft. Yeah. And it has bewitched a lot of people. Yeah. It has made people believe that they can't live without their medicine. Okay. But I'm going to tell you today, the devil is a liar. Uh, I tell God, thank you. I ain't never had a prescription yet, and I ain't planning on getting one either. Uh, but if necessary, if there's a leaf out there that will heal me, I'll go take a bite off that leaf before I go spend my money at the pharmacy. That's for sure. Yeah. So we need to know that God had already orchestrated all these things in the beginning. Yeah. And those people that came along before us, they didn't go to no drugstore. They didn't even do that. First of all, they didn't have no money to go to the drugstore. Right. But you know, old mama would throw something in that pot in the kitchen and say, let me take a few of these leaves and mix it with some honey and, and a little berry juice in there and you're going to be all right. Don't you worry about it. I, I put a little cow liver oil in there and I don't care what you're going through. Cow liver oil going to take care of it. And if cow liver oil, castor oil shows up will take care of it. I'll tell you right now, castor oil will clean everything out of you. Don't make no difference. I, you know, I can stand the brown, but that white boy, that clear mess you up. I'm going to tell you now, but I took a lot of that clear. And it'll clean you out. If anything wrong with you, it's coming out. You ain't got to worry about that. Amen. Children, y'all know anything about castor oil? No, no. Y'all ever heard of that? Uh -huh. Y'all ever heard of cod liver oil? No. Uh -huh. see, see how we done changed over time? Yeah, yeah, cod liver. You didn't go to the drugstore and get no drugs, or you didn't have no money, first of all. And nobody had time for that. You got to get back out in that field. Let me, you know what my mom used to do? And I called my mom. She was one of my foster mom. I got had three. But she'd take that thing, it's clear look like, and she squeeze it on your grits. Mm -hmm. And I like grits, but uh, that didn't taste you when you put it on your grits. <laughs> but I ate it in the house. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I felt much better. And I can go out and play, work, do whatever I need to do. So anyway, but when that time comes, I got sidetracked, I'm sorry. But when that time comes, the only thing you're going to need is that tree of life. Yeah. Just Amen. pick your leaf and, and go on about That's your merry good. way. I uh, see, because uh, uh, it also says not only would it be for the healing, but it says during that time in verse 3, it says there will be no more curse. No more, no more curse. Amen. You're, 
Look, you ain't even got to worry about the curse of sin because there ain't going to be no sin. Right. Nobody's going to be sinning. All the sinners are going to be uh, standing before the white throne. Uh -huh. And then once they appear before the white throne, guess what? They're going to be in the lake of fire. Yeah. So you ain't got to worry about okay. that. You don't have to worry about nobody coming up to you, uh, trying to hurt you, uh, trying to kill you, because it said there'll be no more death that's there anyway. Right, uh, right. You don't have to worry about nobody, because it said there'll be no more pain. Ain't that good to know? That's right. Amen. That you don't Amen. Live in a time like that. And then verse 5 says, there shall be no night there. That's right. It says, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. And how long is forever? forever. It is forever. Yeah. So that means there ain't going to be no more nighttime because you know what happened. Uh, for us old school people, the freaks come out at night. <laughs> so you ain't got to worry about that no more because there ain't going to be no more night. Amen. So all that stuff that men do in the dark, they ain't going to be able to do it in the dark no more. Right. They're not going to be around to do it in the dark anymore. It's that, you know, men love darkness rather than light anyway. What we're living right now. You know why? Because their deeds are evil. So they'll wait till nighttime when they think nobody can't see them. And then they'll and see they ain't going to have that opportunity that, when that happens. Because there ain't going to be no more night. Because one thing about it is the Lord going to be raining. And he gonna be, his light going to be shining. He's going to light up the whole world. And we're going to reign with him. And we're going to reign with him forever. So if you want to reign with him, you need to make sure that you understand what you need to do to reign with him. And not stand before that white throne. But one of the best things to know is this. He said unto me, talking to John, these sayings are faithful and true. Amen. And the Lord God of the holy prophet sent his angel to show unto his servants things which must shortly be done. Amen. So that's the best news of all. Because what that says is, if you read this word, you can count on it coming to pass. Amen. You don't have to worry about it saying he just said one thing here and something else going to happen. No. He, it, when you hear it in the word of God it is the truth and it shall happen it doesn't make any difference what people tell you some people will tell you there's no way that's going to happen uh, there ain't no way you're going to see a grasshopper that got a face like a man and all of that kind of stuff and have a scorpion sting on it if the Lord said it you, you want to find out you stick around and see I ain't got to he ain't got to prove it to me I'll take your word for it Lord Cause that's in them twenty-one judges. Yeah. I don't want to be here for this. Yeah, but if you want, if you want to try it out, say, "Well, that can't be true. I ain't worried about it." You stick around, and you will find out. I'm sure they'll be right back after that word. <laughs> don't you worry about it. And when they start stinging you, it's too late to say, "Well, I guess this was it." You know, that's a strange-looking grasshopper with a man's face, and then that man's face probably laughing at you because you didn't believe. See, there are so many things that happen in the word of God that people don't believe. Right. You know, things that have already happened. They didn't think those things were going to happen, but they did happen. Yes. And the fact that they were in the word and the word, you know, everything has just about happened right. that the word of God said is going to happen. Amen. The only thing that has not happened is the things that I'm telling you about today. But one thing about it, a good thing to know is they going to happen. Amen. They going to happen. And that's going to, you know, they had a movie came out called uh, The Purge. Mm -hmm. And what happened is in that movie, they let people do whatever they, they had yeah. one day where they let people do whatever they want to. You can kill people if you want to. Mm -hmm. Didn't make any difference. Don't y'all know that once the church is gone, that's a good chance that that's going to really happen yeah. to all the people that are left behind? There ain't going to be no laws. Lawlessness going to be in the land. There ain't no law in the land now. Because you know a policeman is already on trial before he even does anything. Yeah. So they know they trying to tie the policeman's hands now. They got cameras. Here. You say something to me, I'm putting it on film. I'm filming you. So they scared to do their job now. What do you think going to happen when the church is gone? Amen. What do you think going to happen when all the saints of God are gone? Yeah. I'm going to tell you right now, you don't want to be left behind. Right. You don't, right. You might not believe in the rapture. That's up to you. But I tell you one thing, you better hurry up and start believing because it is so. Uh, and I'm telling you now, if you're not around for the rapture, you better make sure you died in Christ. Uh, you don't even know. It, it could be tomorrow. Your last hour could be, you don't know when it's going to be. So you need to make sure you got Christ in you Amen. and you in him. Amen. Just like we heard in the Sunday school, you abide in him and he abides in you. Amen. 
Because if you are a branch that's been cut off, you're going to do what, children? You're going to wither and you're going to die and you will be burned. You believe that? You will be burned. And you'll be burned in a lake of fire because a white throne is where you want to appear. So we need to make up in our mind now what we believe. Because Another thing that's good to know is that our Lord and Savior has already secured already, it for us. Yes. He has already secured our future. Amen. He has already wrote what the end is going to be. He's going to make sure that it happens the way his father has already revealed to him. And his father is going to allow him to be the judge. Mm. And you know why he's going to be the one that's going to judge? When you stand before the judgment seat of Christ, it's the judgment seat of Christ. That means you're going to be standing at the judgment seat of Jesus, the Son of God. Yeah. And he was given the right and the privilege yeah. to judge the whole world because of what he did over 2,000 years ago. Yeah. Because he suffered that we wouldn't have to suffer. Amen. So since he suffered so we don't have to suffer, if we suffer, it's by our choice that we suffer. He does not want us to suffer. He wants us to have everlasting life. He wants us to have eternal life, full of God's glory. Yes. But we have to make the decision. We have to accept what he did over 2,000 years ago. We have to accept how they accused him of doing something that he had not done. We have to accept the fact that even though he was falsely accused, he didn't say a mumbling word. Yes. He just let them do whatever they wanted to do. They mistreated him. They slapped him. They pulled his beard. They whipped him all night long with a cat and nine tail, a whip with glass and, and bones and all kind of stuff on the end. So as they hit him with it, it clung to his body, and then they pulled it off, pulling skin from his body, pulling meat from his body. He did that for us. He didn't even deserve any of that. Yes. We were the ones that deserved that. But he took it anyway. Now, you you know, we heard this morning, and it is true, what greater love than a friend have for his brother, than a, lay, uh, than a, than a man have for his friend, than to lay down his life. And Jesus had that love for us because he took that beating for us. Yes. And then they tried to try to criticize me even more. Say, oh, you say you the king, huh? You the king of the Jews? You the king? Yeah, yes, he is. And then they gave him a crown. They made that crown out of thorns and put it around his head. And they pushed it in to make sure that, it, that he could feel that crown on his head. And then he felt the blood running down from the thorn sticking in his, in his head. But that's all right because he still was crowned king of kings. Right. They didn't even know what they were doing. Amen. Uh, they and then they went to the next level because they put a robe on them, a yeah, royalty. Yeah. See, they, they were trying to be funny. Yeah. But what they didn't know is they were telling the truth. Yes, you just crowned it and robed the king of kings yeah. and the lord of lords. I know you don't know what you're doing, but now all the people get to see that he is king. Yeah. So when we look at that crown up there, we know we look at the crown of the king. Yeah. And then when we look at this table, guys, we know we're looking at the one who shed the blood, whose body was beaten and torn just for us. Yeah. Thank you, lord. Something that he didn't have to do. Nice. Something that he chose to do so we all might have a right to the tree of life. Now, y'all know that's good to know. Yeah. Uh, that he Amen. suffered just for us. Yeah. Suffered so we wouldn't have to suffer. Thank and then he let him go to the next level. After they accused him, then they already said, you are guilty. They found him guilty. And then they decided, well, you know what we're going to do? We're going to do what we always do with criminals. We're going to put you on the cross. Yeah. Matter of fact, we're going to make you carry your cross. And then as we you get there on top of that hill called God got the hill, better known as the skull, when you get up there, we're going to nail you to the cross and we're going to hang you up. And we're going to hang you up between two male factors because in our opinion, you just like them. That's right. How many know he wasn't nothing Amen. like them? Amen. And then one on the right had enough common sense Amen. to realize Amen. who he really Amen. was. Amen. I'm going to tell you right now, saints, y'all better realize, just like I had to realize, who he really is. Amen. And then the one on the right hand said, oh, when you go into your kingdom, please remember me. Yeah. He said, don't worry about it. Today, yeah. this yeah. day, you will be with me in paradise. Yeah. Now, ain't that good to know? Yeah. When someone gets saved, they'll save that day. Yeah. And they'll be with Jesus forever. Yeah. So when you go out there telling people about the good news, let them know. They don't have to wait till tomorrow. Tomorrow may be too late. They can be with Jesus right now. 
at the appointed hour. That ain't that good to know. Amen. Tell them they can be saved right now. Amen. So when it, he was said, I'm, you're going to be with the other ones uh, talking. Now you need to get me down. Get yourself down if you should tell you this and that. Get me down when you get down. And we're, no. The man said, look, you need to be quiet. The one on the right said, you don't know what you're talking Amen. about. Amen. This man has done nothing wrong. Yes. You deserve to be here just like I deserve yeah. to be here. But he has done nothing wrong. No crime has he committed. Amen. But he let him go ahead on the hang him on that cross. And he did, in fact, give up the ghost. After Amen. he went through all that suffering, he gave up the ghost. Yeah. And he did it for you. And he did it for me. And I tell him, thank you. That's good for me to know when I wake up in the morning and think about the goodness of Jesus yeah. and all that he's done for me. My soul can't help but cry out, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you for laying down your life for me. Thank you for raising up again on the third day with all power in your hand. Oh, that's good to know. It's good to know that he sits on the right hand of the Father right now, making intercession for us. So when the enemy accuses us of something that we didn't do, he stands right there and says, Father, don't even listen to him. You already know him to be a liar, and he is the Father of life. Ain't that good to know that someone is going on your case? Someone is going on your bond? Someone who you know you can depend on? Someone who gave up everything that we might have everything? Yes. That's good to know. That's good Amen. To know. So we thank God for raising him up on the third day. And we thank him for the ultimate sacrifice that he paid yes, for us. Lord. And we're going to be celebrating that in a few more yes, days. Uh, we ain't got to wait to Resurrection Sunday to celebrate it. We can celebrate it right now. Right where we're sitting right now, we can celebrate because he's already done it. He's not going to do it again on Resurrection Sunday. He's already done it. Only thing we're going to do is put it in remembrance. We're going we're gonna to give him a praise on that day in remembrance because what he's done, he's done. And he's not going to do it again. And I'm telling you right now, people are waiting for him to do something something spectacular to get them saved, they might as well forget it. He's already done it. He ain't doing nothing else. There's nothing else to be done. Amen. Only thing that needs to be done now is that we receive him yeah. and that we obey him. we obey him and we keep his commandments yes, Lord. and we love him. And then we love our neighbors yes, ourselves. ourselves. And if you love your neighbor so much, get on some of the good news that you got today you, and share it with them because they don't know what's going on. They all worried about how this thing is going and how it's going to end and why Russia doing this and why they doing that and why Russia flying over the United States uh, Navy and, and uh, fly bombing. Why, oh, why is all this going on? The reason it's going on because the word of God said it's going to go on. Amen. So it's good to know. It's good to know. So let's share this good news with our neighbors. Share it with our friends. Share it with anyone. Amen. When you go to the hospital, instead of looking at the person and saying, "Well, I sure hope you get better," no, you need to say, "Hey, have you heard the good news?" Amen. Have you heard the good news? Even while you land here on your sick bed, even though you inflicted with cancer, have you heard the good news? Yeah. Uh, and have you received Jesus Christ as your personal savior? Yeah. Well, if you receive Jesus Christ as your personal savior, if something should happen. And the Lord take you up out of here. You gonna rise first. You ain't got to worry about it. But while you're still here, make sure you follow His commandments. Make sure you know who He is. Don't get cut off from the vine. You need to stay attached to the vine. If you ain't attached to the vine, you know that can grab you into the vine if you ain't attached to the vine. So there's someone here today that's not attached to the vine. You need to get grafted into the vine uh, today. Because tomorrow may be too late. God bless you. Amen.